Let's first arrive the put call parity for European options. To do that, we need to understand what a protective put is and what a fiduciary call is. We will start with a protective put. Suppose an investor owns an asset that has a current price of S0. We shall assume the asset makes no cash payments and has no carrying costs. The end of the holding period is time T, at which point the asset will be worth ST. Fearing the possibility that ST will decline, the investor buys a put option with an exercise price of X. This put option has a premium of P0. Combined with the value of the asset, the investor's initial position is worth S0 plus P0, which is the investor's money at risk. At expiration, the value of the asset is ST. Based on this value, the value of the put will be either 0 or X minus ST. In such a case where ST is greater than X, the asset has performed well and the investor will let the put option expire. This means that the investor keeps the asset which is worth ST. The ending position in this case where the put option expires out of the money is therefore ST. If ST ends up lower than the exercise price, the investor would exercise the put. He will sell the asset for X dollars. Under this scenario, where the put option expires in the money, the investor's ending position becomes X. So in essence, a protective put is a strategy made up of a long position in the underlying asset coupled with a long position in the put option. We shall now find out why it's called a protective put. Let's examine the relationship between ST, the expiration price of the underlying, and the payoff of each of these options. The payoff of a long position in the underlying asset is, quite obviously, the underlying spot price itself. We can therefore draw a continuous line with a slope of 1. The payoff of a long position in a put option is slightly more complicated. Recall that the minimum payoff is 0, which is when the underlying expires at the strike price or higher. The payoff increases as ST goes lower until a maximum payoff of X when the underlying expires at zero. If we were to add up the payoffs from these two positions, the combined payoff will follow this orange line. Notice that this is consistent with the investor's ending position, which is ST when ST is greater than X and X when ST is less than X. You can see why this strategy is called the protective put. The investor receives the benefit of unlimited upside potential with the downside performance truncated at X. Let's put this aside first as we turn our focus now to the other segment, which is the fiduciary call. Consider another investor, an options trader. At time zero, this investor buys a call option on this asset with an exercise price of X that expires at time T. At the same time, he buys a risk-free zero coupon bond with a face value of X that matures at T. The call costs C0 and the bond costs the present value of X, which is X over one plus R to the power T. Thus, the investor has invested funds of C0 plus the present value of X. At time T, if ST exceeds the exercise price, the investor will want to exercise the call option. So the investor sells the bond and uses the proceeds to buy the underlying asset. The ending position of the investor when the call option expires in the money is therefore ST. If ST does not exceed the exercise price at expiration, the call expires worthless and the bond is worth X dollars. The ending position of the investor when the call option expires out of the money is therefore X. This strategy is known as a fiduciary call. It's a strategy made up of a long position in call option and a long position in a risk-free bond. Again, let's examine the relationship between ST 
and the payoff of each of these positions. The payoff of a risk-free bond has no relation to the spot price of the underlying at all. We know that the payoff at expiration will always be X dollars. We can therefore draw a horizontal line as payoff equals to X. The payoff of a long position in a call option is slightly more complicated. Recall that the minimum payoff is zero, which is when the underlying expires at the strike price or lower. The payoff increases as ST goes higher. We can therefore draw an upward sloping line after X. If we were to add up the payoffs from these two positions, the combined payoff will follow this orange line. Again, notice that this is consistent with the investor's ending position, which is ST when ST is greater than X and X when ST is less than X. Now, do you see the similarities between the protective put and the fiduciary call? Both strategies produce the same result. If both investors receive the same payoffs at time t, regardless of the asset price at t, the amounts they invest at time zero have to be the same. Thus, we require that S0 plus P0 equals C0 plus the PV of X. And we finally arrived at our put-call parity. So how can the put-call parity be used for pricing options? Let's illustrate with a simple example. At time zero, an underlying asset is traded at $90. Assume that the underlying has a call and a put option with an exercise price of $100. The risk-free rate is 4% and the options expire in three months, so T is one quarter. Discounting the exercise price by 4% for one quarter, we get a present value of $99.02. This is the value of the risk-free bond that the investor has to buy at initiation. We can rearrange the put-call parity formula such that all the options are on one side. So, plugging in the figures, we know that the difference between the put price and the call price must be $9.02. This defines the relationship between the put and the call with the same exercise price. So, if the put is trading in the open market at $15, we would expect the price of the call to be $5.98. This is the price at which no arbitrage is possible. If there is significant mispricing between the two, accounting for transaction costs, an arbitrage opportunity will exist. You're watching an excerpt from our comprehensive animation library. For more videos like these, head on down to prepnuggets.com. At Prep Nuggets, let us do the hard work for you.